The Elgato Wave 1 is the mic that we're going to be using today for our video about audio tips to make you sound better. Hey guys, get level here. I feel like it's been a while since I even said that intro, but I want you to know that I have a tech channel. I have a tech channel called Gail's Tech Review. And if you want to see the tech that I buy for myself and my opinion on tech that you can buy, not only for content creation, but for other stuff, I think this would be the best place to go subscribe right now. I'm trying to reach 1000 subscribers there. So today, Today, we are going to give a bunch of audio tips and we're going to be using the Elgato Wave 1 that was generously sent to me by Elgato. Thank you, Elgato. And the goal of this video is to let you know all the things that you need to keep in mind while live streaming or recording. All right, so now we switch to the Elgato Wave 1 that I'm holding with my hand just because it's more fun. It currently has a bunch of filters, so there's a lot of things going on to make it sound the way it sounds. but. We'll get into that a little bit later. Let's start with the basics. The first thing you really want to do is get your mic off the table. I know those mics come with a little stand and stuff like that, but most mics will pick up all the vibrations that your table is picking up. That means if your PC is on the table, your fan's running, there's a little hum that's gonna come from it. If you're typing on your keyboard, you're moving and slapping your mouse around, your mic is going to pick up all of that. So do your best to get it off the table. One thing you can do is put it on a mic arm, which is pretty cool because the Elgato Wave 1 comes with this little adapter that has two of the standard mic formats that turns it into a quarter inch thread, which makes it even more universal if you own a bunch of photography or, or just camera equipment. Now, a mic arm is a great solution, but I don't want my first tip to be like, go buy something. You know, if you don't have the budget for a mic arm yet, what you can do is actually put an old t-shirt underneath the mic stand in order for it to absorb some of the vibrations coming from your table. You can use an old sponge. You can use old foam that you have like from packing foam and stuff like that. Anything that will get it off the table directly. Okay, the mic position is actually really important. The most important position is speaking directly into the diaphragm. 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 Because if I turn this mic around, you will realize that it doesn't sound the same at all. So make sure you figure out exactly where you're supposed to speak into your mic. Another tip that's really going to help you as a live streamer, for example, because, you know, everything is in the heat of the moment is to learn how to move your body. People will tell you if you're recording, do not move. Stay at the same position to have the same levels so everything sounds clean. But if you're live streaming, you're going to sneeze, you're going to laugh out loud, you're going to scream. So you need to learn to adapt your position. You'll see on my live streams, every time I'm laughing, I know I'm going to be loud i go ha, 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 and it avoids me just screaming straight into the mic you'll also see me get close to the mic when i want to say something just like that okay so it's not too loud because if i get super close i can't speak at the same volume it's going to be too loud so understand how the mic works think of it as an ear okay if i get very close to your ear and i go ha, ha, like <laughs> I'm causing you harm at this point. <laughs> Another example is singers. You'll see singers move the mic away or move their head away from the mic when they're singing just to make sure that the levels stay clean. Speaking of mic position, they say that eight inches is the distance that you should keep between your mouth and the mic. I like to breach that distance a little bit to get a little bit closer because some mics require me to get really close if I want really want to get that bass feel. You know what I'm saying? Because every time like I go a little further, I'm losing the bass. The further I go, I'm losing the bass. And when I go back, I'm like, you tune into 94.9 radio gal level FM. I love that. OK, but obviously I can't be too loud. If I'm starting to be loud, I need to get more distance in between me and the mic another thing you can do is use a pop filter to avoid the plosives you know when you say peter parker or piper perry uh, <laughs> now some microphones handle the plosives better than others cheaper microphones they'll have very sensitive diaphragm and, and like a little can make everything saturate really fast so make sure you use a pop filter keep it a certain distance from the mic so that it actually does its job or you can use a mic beanie as i like to call them the elgato wave one for example handles the plosives really really well i couldn't speak into this mic that close straight on like that which is another tip is that if you don't have a pop filter or you're recording your face and you don't want to have a large pop, pop filter in front of you what you can do is actually 
place the mic at a certain angle. So you'll see with this mic, instead of speaking directly to the face of it, you'll see it underneath my chin. That allows me to speak. So all the air from my mouth is not going straight into the mic. It's actually going up here and the mic is I'm still close enough for the mic to pick it up pretty well. That's one cheap way of avoiding plosives if you don't want to buy or if you haven't bought a pop filter yet. Again, Al Elgato Wave 1 handles the plosives really well because of the face of the mic, the way that it's designed, but you can also put a pop filter in front of it if you have to, especially if you're gonna go very up close, but it doesn't seem to be an issue at all. It sounds way better than my mic that already has the, the mic beanie, to be honest. Ooh, another tip that feels like it's some sort of weird, uh, um, mystical, weird superstitious, it's to eat an apple before recording, because when you eat an apple, it apparently your lips don't smack as much so uh this tip was coming from kevin from basic filmmaker i believe i hope i'm not quoting this wrong but yeah uh i tried it before recording and it actually works there's less before <laughs> while i'm recording so it's amazing lip smacks are a certain noise so while we're in the subject of noise let's talk about noise the first thing you want to do is control your environment right now i have a fan in the background and this is the only well the the loudest source of noise in my room right now all the doors are closed all the windows are closed if you have pets kick them out if you have kids kick them out close the door shut the door <laughs> and make sure you don't have something that is actively producing noise don't put your phone on vibration put it on silent especially if it's going to sit on the table right next to you if you have a laptop with a loud fan running in the background shut it off now remember i told you to speak in the face of the mic so if you have something that needs to stay in, for example, let's say a fan, try to make sure that the noise source is behind the mic and not in front of it. In my case, I really can't do it because behind the mic is my camera and then a wall. But uh, this fan is far enough for you to not really hear it. So once you've controlled the environment, there should be one source of noise one thing that really sounds weird with your mic and that's going to be reverb that is basically your voice bouncing off the walls coming back to the mic and when i told you to be close to the mic you can hear the reverb the more like the <laughs> the further i get to the mic the more it feels like there's some weird phaser effect like you can hear myself multiple times that's what reverb sounds like you can tell that i'm in a room right now a room that's kind of empty the emptier the room, the more reverb you will get. So the way to combat that is you're going to use special foam that you can put on the walls that is going to observe observe that's going to absorb some of those frequencies. Now, before you go buy the first cheap uh, acoustic panels that you find, you need to listen to your mic, plug your mic in, listen to it, test the reverb, go further from the mic, scream and identify which frequencies the reverb seem to be the like super loud in basically is it the bass frequencies is it the higher frequencies is it the mid frequencies so that you can buy the appropriate ones elgato came out with a bunch of acoustic panels i actually have a box i don't know if you can see it from here but i haven't tried it yet but the cool thing with the elgato acoustic panels is that they have different foam density that means that they are made to absorb most of the frequencies anyway so that you don't need to buy different ones but you know, they are a little bit in the, on the pricey side and because of the price, you can't cover your whole room with it, but it's fine. We're mostly live streamers and reverb is not that much of an issue, especially when that issue disappears as soon as you get a little bit closer to your mic. So, so that's definitely a decision that you need to make when it comes to buying acoustic panels. All right, I mentioned buying, so I have to mention an alternative. Something that you can put up around your recording area is blankets and coats and anything that is softer material that can absorb sound and that will actually take care of most of your reverb there's a lot of podcasters that will record in a closet surrounded by a bunch of blankets and they sound fantastic <laughs> well, i don't know how practical it's going to be for you but if you build a little fort blanket in front of you uh you should be good so once again especially if you're a live streamer or even a youtuber for example the 
little bit of noise that you're gonna have left assuming that you followed every other tip that i gave you and you're speaking pretty close to the mic the little bit of noise that you have left you can mask it with music that's what i do there's never a time in my stream where music is not playing unless like you know there's music in the video game but in that case that also masks your own noise so don't worry too much about the little bit the little in a bit of like humming or hissing that you hear it doesn't matter people don't hear it because there's music blasting at the same time all right i think i can put this down because we're going into you know software stuff now okay so you plug your mic for the first time the first thing you want to do is go to your little icon right there right click on it click open sound settings all right in windows that is scroll down make sure that your mic is selected up here as you can see mic in elgato wave one click device properties and the volume button here is pretty much the input gain you want this to not be at 100%. If it's at 100%, it's like you're asking for your stuff to saturate. 75 is pretty much the sweet spot. You can get it up to 80, 85, keep it lower than 90 and you'll be okay. All right, your mic is plugged in, your gain is at uh, 75, and now you want to start actually testing the mic. This is very important. Every time you get a new mic, you need to test it, test it, test it. I'm gonna show you how to do it in OBS Studio. You guys are live streamers and YouTubers use OBS Studio. A easy way to do that is, um, first of all, make sure your mic is set up properly. So settings, audio, and then under mic auxiliary, you have the right mic, okay? So it will appear in your mixer here. And right next to the mixer, you click on the little cog wheel, you click advanced audio property, and then under your mic well next to your mic you will click monitor only output uh, mute output that means that you will hear yourself but you know if you're recording it's not gonna go through that is one way of enabling monitoring so you can hear yourself like right now i can hear myself i'm literally controlling everything with the <laughs> with the um, volume wheel on my headset if you can hear yourself you can hear all the noise that the mic is actually picking up you can hear if it's you know too low too loud um you can start screaming in it and go ah <laughs> make sure that it's not saturating or anything like that if it's saturating you want to go back that 75 you want to drag it down even more uh, but also you want to have a realistic scenario okay am i gonna be close like that when i'm screaming or am i gonna be here if i'm here is there too much reverb maybe i should bring the arm closer to me or find a way to speak closer to the mic Mic, basically uh, you want to test the plosives the pee pee poo poo pa pa you want to test those make sure that your mic is is good to go and then whatever you notice from your mic this is where you're going to start correcting those things okay and the cool thing here is that we can correct them by adding filters okay one thing that elgato told me that made me very happy is that they are working on vst filters right now i'm using the elgato wave one with um wavelength which is their software basically that can control um their audio devices so hopefully soon enough elgato will have their own filters so you won't have to add filters in obs also if you're not using an elgato mic it's good to know what the filters are and what they do so let's open up by clicking on the cogwheel next to our mic and clicking on filters and what i'm gonna do now is turn off everything and show you how to set it up okay so as you can see, I have four different filters. It's usually what you need. So let's turn it off and let's hear what it sounds like. So the mic sounds super clear, but you can hear the fan in the background. There's some humming coming from my table. And um, yeah, it doesn't seem optimal, but when I speak close to it, you can tell that the quality is good overall, right? Let's do something about all that. Something important to know is that there is an order when it comes to filters, okay? So you can't just slap those filters wherever you want. There is a certain order. And the first thing that we want to take care of is the background noise, this. So something important to do while you're doing all this is also to take a look at your actual audio. So you can know when you're peaking, you can know when you're low, and you can literally take a look at your levels right here. So if I shut up, you will see exactly where my noise is sitting. So it's between 50 and 55. So that would help you if you were to add a noise suppression, for example, or a noise gate. So first thing we're gonna add is a noise gate. What does the noise gate do? The noise gate basically mutes your mic unless you speak above a certain level. So when I'm speaking, I'm louder than the background noise. 
So if I turn it on here, ah, you can see close threshold, open threshold. So it opens when I start speaking and it closes when I stop speaking. Complete silence when I'm not speaking, okay? So this is what you want to do when you're setting it up. So let me click it, put it into default. And it's gonna give me some crazy, <laughs> it's gonna give me some wild uh, things. So I, I wanna go and do this, okay? And I wanna go do, let's do that, right? So we know that the noise is between 50 and 55. We're gonna drag the open until it gets around 40 because you want to take account other noises like little clicks or you move your chair a little bit. You don't want it to open for that. So you can tap like on the floor, tapping with my feet, or you can tap your chair a little bit and see where it goes. About 45 to 40. So let's drag the open. And you can see the open is pretty nice 40 right but it's not closing right now once i start speaking it keeps going so we're gonna drag the close and keep talking to test it see it's only when it reaches around 40 that it closes all right now after i speak there's a little bit of noise keep that keeps going on before it closes and that is the release time and you want this to be shorter. So let's put it 50 millisecond and it closes a little bit faster. The hold time can be a little shorter too. Okay. We're getting very close. The attack time, you can probably put it to zero. That's the time it takes in order to open basically. And now we're very short. Not short enough, 50, and that's fast. If you want it to close even faster, you can play around a little bit more with the close threshold. Test, test, okay. Look at that, that's amazing. But watch out, because if you start whispering, it's gonna start cutting, okay? You can't do any cut like that, whispering. No, actually, it's, it's great, it's, it works perfectly. <laughs> All right, second thing that we want now that we know that it cuts is, is that if we're speaking, when we speak, there's still a little bit of noise, right? We want that to get away. So we're gonna add a noise suppression filter. Cool thing is that OBS Studio and Streamlabs OBS, they have this new thing called RNN, RN Noise. It's amazing, it works really well. It actually com It's actually compensating for the frequencies that it's taking away and it makes your mic sound better. But if you have a crappy CPU, you can use the Speaks and this one works differently. If we put it to zero, testing, 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 testing. A good way of calibrating your noise suppression is to turn off your noise gate. Testing, testing. It's not doing much. There's still a little bit of humming, but it works. You can turn on your noise gate again. And now it works really well. So this is low CPU, CPU usage and uh, RN noise, you don't get anything to basically <laughs> to, to play around with, it just works. So we're gonna keep that one for now. Other thing that you want to add is a compressor. Now a compressor, what it's gonna do, let me default. What compressor is gonna do is play around with the dynamics of your voice. So it goes loud and it goes slow and it, it goes super low. The, the volume basically, it's gonna make it smoother. It's gonna take your, your waveform and it's gonna compress it to make it sound a little bit smoother. Also, it might prevent you from going too loud. If you're, you know, going into super, super loud and it's going to saturate, it's going to prevent you from doing that. So um, let's turn it on. Test, 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 test. This is very bad. So let's drag the ratio down to around four. That's what I like. Threshold, you want to take a look at the your actual threshold you want to take a look at your actual levels to see around where you sit i'm around you know minus um 12 minus 13 so i'm going to give it a couple more decibels so basically it can start operating around there right attack is how much time it takes it to get there <laughs> to start acting so to start making sure that you don't go above a certain uh, limit so we're going to reduce that 
all the way down, we want it to take effect immediately. Release, you can keep it at 60 milliseconds. That's completely fine. It's not something that you can really hear. And then output. Now, usually, you know, if you play around with a threshold, it's going to affect it so much that you might have to give it a bit of gain to boost it a little bit. So that's very important. So what you're going to do is boost it a little bit. If you, if you feel the need to, you don't necessarily have to, if it's loud enough, you're fine, but take a look at your levels and make sure that you're barely touching the red. Try to scream a couple of times and make sure that you don't go above and beyond. All right. Last thing is up optional basically, because right now we're despite all the filters, we're still getting the raw not really raw, but we're getting the sound of the Elgato Wave 1 with the noise suppression. Without the noise suppression, it sounds a little bit clearer, just like that. But let me put it back on, right? No more noise. It still sounds pretty clear. What you can do on top of it is add a VST plugin that will be an equalizer. So if there's specific frequencies that you want to lower or boost, you can play around with that. I am specifically using the Marvel GEQ EQ plugin. I made a whole video about it. You can check it out and um, it's not on right now. Let me turn it on and I'm gonna show you the difference. Testing, testing one, two, three. Hello, my name is Gal Level. And as you can hear, this is voiceover quality or maybe radio quality. Maybe I'm trying to get that Alex Jones quality, uh, Alex Jones, you know, that, that podcast or that radio broadcaster, that conspiracy theory. <laughs> All right, let me reset it and show you what I did basically. All right. So if I reset it, this is what it sounds like. So it's pretty normal. But um, one thing you can use it for is to even reduce more noise. If there's a slight humming, there are frequencies that are not in your voice. So what I like to do personally is to speak, continue speaking and drag the frequencies and see if I can hear a difference. And blah, 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 blah. Oh, it changed, right? So from 126, 200, 317, that's what starts affecting my voice, right? Before that, I didn't need it. So if there's any other noise, like a truck going around my place and it starts humming and stuff like that, it's not gonna pick it up because I dealt with those frequencies, all right? So you do the same thing. And now you're gonna try to figure out the profile of your mic. How does my mic sound? Right now, do I have more mids than um, highs? Are my highs really, really high? Uh, the highs are the tss, tss, you know? Um, usually I try to find a mid, a mid frequency that I wanna lower to make sure that it sounds kind of uh, good. It's kind of weird to do this while I'm recording because I'm hearing myself and I'm basically speech jamming myself. So I sound weird. But um, you usually like sound engineers will tell you, you don't want to boost anything because those are muddy frequencies. Like you're boosting trash frequencies basically. So you want to lower stuff in order to filter out stuff so you can have a very, very clean. I say, if you're a live streamer, you are lacking in bass and stuff like that. You want to boost stuff, just boost stuff. Okay? <laughs> it's not good by audio engineer standards, but you know, like your viewers are not going to hear the difference most of the time. On very cheap microphones, I usually have to boost the high frequencies because they, they like that. And I have to lower some of the mid frequencies because sometimes it's like a little too radio-y. You know, it's very, ah, ah. I like to have the bass, you know, I like to have the bass like that. And I have to, I love to sound super clear. See here, you can hear that it's super muddy. Like you can feel that some of the reverb in my room is resonating in this. So we're going to keep that low. Test, 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 test. This one is a little bit, a little bit better. I really love the bass. I can't, I can't be without the bass. Test, 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 test. Okay. Boom. Testing, testing, one, two, three. This is Akon, the illegal. This sounds a little muffled, weirdly, because we lose uh, some of the uh, um, clear sound. You know, the highs is, for me at least, I feel like the highs really help you have a clearer sound. It sounds brighter. And, um, and that's it, basically. You want to hear what this sounds without all the filters? It sounds like this. This is what it sounds like. And this is more of a raw sound. It's gonna sound the most natural and people in the comments are gonna be like, wow, I prefer it without that. I, I get it, I get it. But you know, if you're live streaming or you're recording, you don't want the background noise. You don't want to hear the fan at all. You don't want the humming sound. You don't want the hissing either. So then you slap everything on it. 
boom. It might not sound as natural, but it's gonna be pleasant. Plus with the compressor, you're not gonna be uh, spiking. It's, it's good. Spiking, peaking, same thing. <laughs> You will notice that I didn't talk about buying, you know, higher quality microphones in this video because I don't personally think that the mic, like, you know, there's very, very, very bad microphones. Usually like anything under 50 bucks, don't buy it. Um, but, you know, spending a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars in your audio system doesn't mean that you're going to sound better than someone that has like a one hundred dollar setup. So here's um, a little bit of advice from someone who has a pretty expensive audio setup. Advice for the Broke streamers saving up for the Shure SM7B. Two things, budget and sound. One, this microphone is about $400 US, but because it requires 60 decibels of gain, you have to have the right preamp and or interface. So that means with this microphone, you have to tack on another 60 to $100 for let's say a FET head or a cloud lifter just to get this up to spec with other microphones. The reason being the, the construction of the diaphragm is a little bit further away, so you need to bring it closer to you. The interface, unless it's a Wave XLR or a Go XLR, which is still in like the $200 range, you're going to need a preamp. Now, that being said, you also need a mic arm if you don't already. So we tack on another thirty to hundred dollars, depending on the quality of the mic arm that you're getting. So that four hundred dollar microphone plus, let's say, two hundred dollars for interface and roughly a hundred dollars. If you get the Rode PSA one mic arm, then I'm not good at math, but four plus two, that's six hundred, seven hundred dollars. And that's your budget. So make sure you have a nice, healthy budget because this is a journey, not a destination. Let me tell you. And as an added bonus, if you're like me and you like to yell or get excited during your streams or your podcasts or whatever you're using this to record with, you might want to consider something that has a compressor or a limiter if you're not already doing so in OBS. Shameless plug for Gale Level on that OBS tutorial. And the second thing I mentioned sound because you want to make sure this is the sound that you want for your voice. Now, as a two-time buyer of the SM7B, I have to say I wasn't sure about it the first time around and I had it for about two years, sold it, went through a handful of the microphones and then I came back to it after a bit of production and, and uh, podcast work and stuff. And you have to consider all the sources. Does it sound good in a car? Does it sound good in your headphones? Does it sound good in laptop speakers? That sort of thing. As an all-rounder, this microphone is great for, I think, just about everyone. But it comes down to pure preference at that point. So once you build up that beefy budget, get to this microphone and try it out, then it's a matter of considering what kind of sound you want. Like, comment, subscribe, get levels of man. All right, I'm done. <laughs> so those are the basics of how to sound a little bit better with your microphone, with your USB microphone as soon as you plug it in. Again, I have a tech channel, so if you would like to see a full review of the Elgato microphone, Elgato microphone, I don't think I pronounced that right, um, you can go and subscribe to my tech channel, Gail's Tech Review. I would really appreciate it. If you're a live streamer and you're looking for some dope overlays, go to gumroad.com slash get level. I have a bunch of them there. Most of them are free. Yes, free, zero, nada, niet, gratis. And, uh, <laughs> and the rest is super, super duper affordable, okay? Um, if you're looking to make animated logo, gaming logos, you know, those cool things, you can do them in a couple of clicks by using placeit.net. I have a link in the description. That's gonna give you 15% off, so check it out. Link in the description. Um, other than that, check out my other videos about audio. I made a video about other plugins that you can use that might be easier for you to use and, uh, and all that good stuff, okay? So keep on learning about being a content creator and being a live streamer. Go out there. Make me proud. Get level out. <laughs>